While some people might prefer to complain about their coworkers via a text or maybe a trip to their therapist, Ron Johnson likes to call Senate hearings. This report you're you you lied about. repeatedly. I did not you lied this. repeatedly in the press that I was spreading Russian, dis, Russian disinformation, and that was an outright lie. And I told you to stop lying, and you continue to do it, Mr. Chairman. This is not about airing your grievances. I know what I don't know what rabbit hole you're running down. You right talked now. about you Russian disinformation. Down rabbit holes. Stay tuned because I'm about to give you all the context you need for what the Republicans are trying to pull here. This taxpayer-funded Ron Johnson bitch fest, which was put on under the guise of panel to discuss election security, also did the work of undermining faith in our democracy. L let me start the hearing by saying this hearing should not be controversial. This hearing should not be happening. Today we will hear testimony on how election law laws in some cases were not enforced. Lie. And how fraudulent voting did occur as it always does. When 300 million people are voting, yeah, there's gonna be some fraud, I'm sure. But the question is... The question that follows is whether the level of fraud would alter the outcome of the election. Let me guess, we don't know how much fraud there was, so we'd better investigate. The conclusion has collectively been reached that it would not. Okay, great hearing, everybody. Lunch? Lunch? However, lacks enforcement, denying effective bipartisan observation of the complete election process. These are all claims that Republicans have not been able to show a shred of evidence for. And fail failure to be fully transparent or conduct reasonable audits has led to heightened suspicion. But there was total transparency in this election. There were paper audits, which served their purpose because when they checked them, they matched what the machine spit out. The heightened suspicions are coming from the false claims that you all raised out of your ass. Ron Johnson's two star witnesses in this case were Jesse Benal, who got laughed out of court in Nevada, and James Troopas, who got laughed out of court in Wisconsin. James Troopas and his wife actually voted in Wisconsin via mail-in ballot. So when they argued in front of the Supreme Court of Wisconsin to toss out all mail-in ballots in the state, they were arguing against themselves. Well, you might be asking yourself now, if Trump's lawyers got laughed out of court in courtrooms all across the country, why are we still talking about this? To answer that question, Ron Johnson brought in Republican dinosaur lawyer Ken Starr. The vast majority of these uh, cases were uh, rejected for uh, rightly stated procedural reasons, uh, as opposed to a merits-based or substantive-based uh, evaluations. So what Ken Starr is basically saying here is that these court cases didn't even make it to the part where they would get thrown out due to lack of evidence. They were thrown out based on procedural grounds, even though they actually didn't have any evidence to present anyway. Also, a lot of these court cases were actually thrown out due to lack of evidence, so... Which Rand Paul took to mean courts just don't like to get involved in election cases. Though that we uh, look at this and understand what courts are saying and not saying. The courts have not said there wasn't fraud. The courts just simply didn't rule on or hear from the fraud. Oh, Rand! There was no fraud to hear from or to rule on in the first place. I do think there's an important issue here, though. The fraud is one aspect of this. <sighs> and I think courts have historically been reticent to get involved in elections and to look at fraud. But moving forward, we've got to change the rules or reevaluate our state rules in order that this doesn't happen again. We and that's what this is all about. This is your typical Republican laws looking for a crime. They're gonna use this lie to fuel newer and more restrictive voter suppression laws in red states because they know their policies are unpopular and they don't wanna be held accountable for them. But it's also about Ron Johnson wanting to throw a hissy fit. It's also about that. Josh Hawley made an appearance too, and he came up with this cracker. How important it is that we're having today's hearing. Let me just give you an example why. Yesterday, I was talking, I'm from the state of Missouri, Yesterday, I was talking with uh, some of the constituents back at home, a group of about 30 people. Every single one of them, every one of them, told me 
that they felt they had been disenfranchised, that their votes didn't matter, that the election had been rigged. You're the one that's been feeding them this crap about them being disenfranchised, that their vote didn't matter, that the election was rigged, and they're simply regurgitating this crap right back to you. And it is crap because it didn't come from a place of evidence. It came out of a place, and I can't stress this enough, out of your ass. So basically, we have to hold this hearing because our constituents believed our lies. These are normal, reasonable people. I'm sure once upon a time, Josh Hawley's constituents were normal people. But then the GOP kept lying to him about the elections, and now they're a bunch of raving lunatics. Chris Krebs, the former U.S. cybersecurity chief, whose job it was to protect the last election, actually spoke at the hearing about the challenges posed by the GOP's lies and what his agency came up with to deal with them. And while we, also, while we were principally focused on stopping actual hacks, we also had to contend with perception hacks, a form of disinformation which we countered with our rumor control website. Ah uh, yes, the rumor control website which was created to combat the very disinformation that was being brought up in this very hearing. Krebs then took some time to call out the Republican Party for their irresponsible actions. I, I think it's, uh, again, an affront to democracy that the, the citizens of the United States of America that are responsible for executing this sacred democratic institution of elections are being threatened on a daily basis. I mean, you, you, you name it, whether it's emails, whether it's phone calls, whether it's people showing up at your house. I, this, just, I don't, this is not America I recognize, and it's got to stop. We need everyone across uh, uh, the, you know, the leadership ranks to stand up. I, I think I, you know, I would appreciate more support from my own party, Repu the Republican Party, to call this stuff out and end it. We got to move on. We have a president-elect in uh, President-elect Biden. These are Republicans that are putting country over party. They're being subjected to just horrific threats as a result. This is not America. Well, it shouldn't be America, but thanks to Republicans, it absolutely is America right now. And look at Ron Johnson here. Can he look any more uncomfortable? He's got the look of a guy that's saying like, oh my God, I called a hearing just because I was mad at my coworkers, but now I'm doing real damage to the fabric of American democracy. Or maybe he's just got indigestion. Well, I hope it's the worst indigestion.